I'll just wait for somebody to show up or hopefully a lot of people show up. Mr. Bean is playing in the background. Hi, DJ. What's up? Is it raining where you're at right now? No. Was it raining? I know it was snowing in Los Angeles, not out in the hills, higher hills. It's too cold outside. I had to go inside to, on this live. So the battery has 100%. And the last time we did it, it went down to 6%. So and that took about an hour. That's good. You know, I don't want to be live for like three hours. Especially for the people in the north right now. Still in the negatives. Negative 40, negative 50, negative 30. Canada, Minnesota. Uh, the polar is coming to us now. I mean, <laughs> we're nowhere near that, but, but uh, this past week, we're just getting hail, snowing. It hasn't, been snow it hasn't snowed here in 30 years almost, or 20 years. So slowly it's coming. Oh, 4 a.m. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Nice seeing you, by the way. It's pretty dry. It, 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 well, so the rain, it must, my family's in Los Angeles. I have some in San Diego as well. The rain must have went more north than San Diego. I used to be stationed in San Diego in a Point Loma submarine base. They used to train old World War II submarine base. They used to train uh, dolphins to attach bombs onto boats and swim away. And when the dolphin attaches the bomb to the boat, they'd swim away. And there's a diffuser, like one or two minutes or whatever, and boom, it would go off. Can you imagine? So yeah, on your uh, spider mites for your moringa, correct? Are those leaves, you said they fell off, are they still off? And are the spider mites still there? While we're waiting on that answer, if she's answering, um, I hope... Uh, Well, spider mites are somewhere. So if, if neem oil doesn't work on spider mites, what you can use is um, castor oil and just a little bit of apple cider vinegar and soap and water, of course. Mix it up with water and uh, just spray. The castor oil coats their body, makes it sticky. The vinegar burns them. The soap makes it helps it stick as well and wash them off. And um, after a while, they're all, they're all gone. The problem with neem oil, one moment. The problem with neem oil, if anybody's using neem oil, uh, is that the residuals, it's, it's on the tree and when it falls off the tree, Oh, yeah, soap and water in the heat is not a good idea. Not even vinegar or oil or nothing. Um, one time I did it, and it seemed to work because I moved to other parts of the plant, was hanging, like I do with the, my avocados, hanging a rosemary. They hate rosemary. Thrips love rosemary, so if you have thrips, don't do that. But if they're hungry, they're hungry. 
What was I talking about? One moment. Oh, neem oil. If it falls onto the floor, it can kill your mycorrhiza. It can kill your beneficial mycelium and all that. You have to do what you have to do, though. Mycelium can regrow. Mycelium can regrow, but it will affect the soil life if you use neem oil. Uh, where you live, do you have um, neem trees? Neem, the actual tree? If so, cut, make cuttings off the leaves and hang them on the, your moringas uh, when they come back, when the leaves come back. No trees. If, if you know anybody, or if there is a way you could order. You said you're a Botswana? But that's, that's unfortunate with San Diego with no rain. That's really unfortunate. My Moringa finally, for the first time, reached almost 15 feet last year, and I cut it back to 8 feet, 7, 8 feet, so we're going to see if, if it can go up there. I think that someone, a commenter, came and told me it's not good to grow Moringa in um, like really good, healthy soil. It's that dry, TJ? Jeez. Um... They said with my really good soil, Moringa loves arid, hard clay. My soil is, you know, five, six years of thick wood chips decomposed over time, over and over, piling it on top of each other. And some parts of my garden, like around my avocado, if you step in it, if you step in it, you'll sink a little bit. Okay, so you did get some rain. Nice week of rain, you mean? But uh, so they were telling me, because I've been trying for five years to grow moringa and nothing, nothing. And finally last year, I just backed off the water, backed off fertilizer, backed off everything, except for foliar feeding. When I put fish emulsion, I did that test. It helped the growth, but um, I'm not going to do that th this year coming up. I'm going to do a lot of stuff different this year. And question, uh, anybody... Uh, you know, while we're still waiting for some more people to come. Anybody like, because uh, I put a lot of work into these new videos. Do you like how I do these new videos where they're segmented? Like question of the day, uh, shouting out to a commenter, things like that. Instead of just me just filming, hey, I, I see something cool. Let me just film this and upload it. Or do you want both? Hi, Wayne. So I'm guessing that yes is about how I'm doing my new uh, videos. Yeah, see, the, 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 the person that told me about that is from Phoenix, about the Moringa. Yeah. Oh, shoot. What did TJ say? Yeah, it's community aspect. like that. Okay. You like the new videos. They do. They take a... They, you know, behind the scenes... Um... I'll just say, like, uh, it, let's say it takes about a half an hour to film. It's, it's three to four hours of editing, it really. I mean, I'm getting it down to about two and a half, practicing more and more, but uh, it's a lot more work. But you know what? Like, I've <laughs> Somebody was talking to me, a YouTuber, asking me, how come I didn't get burnt out yet? They're asking, you know, because... I didn't do it for subscribers, which I'm glad. I'm, I think I'm at, I'm at the laptops here at 1522 subscribers. They're like, this is what they told me. You've been at this for almost two and a half years. And at 520 videos, you finally got to your 1,000 uh, subscriber. We know people. Hey, salam alaikum. Hello from Jordan. Jordan, awesome. I had a friend that went to Jordan. He was Special Forces, though. He got his best haircut, he said, in his life is in Jordan. And I have a friend here, a colleague, that was very close friends with King Hussein. Very close friends when he was alive. The old, the old man of Jordan. Um, he told me, hey, uh, that I know less people than you 
that have quit with 50 videos and they only get like, like, let's say 20 or 30 subscribers, they go, you've put out over 500 and you barely got your thousand. You barely got your thousand. And, um, that's not what I, I told them. My drive isn't that my drive is to share everything I've learned 30, you know, if I remember when I was three years old, but 30 plus years of gardening every day. This is what I, I, I when I'm in my office, I read books like this, this, this book. It's probably backwards for you guys. Uh, I go to, I go to a 1948 seed catalog for $1. Just to see before there was GMOs, what kind of seeds they used to sell. You know, I have herb books next to me. All I do is this. I don't know why. I don't know why. It probably was when I got done back from the war. This was my sanctuary. And uh, every day, every day is something new. Every day. There's never, my, my friends ask me, you're going to run out of content. I'm at like 635 videos. I'm very good with numbers. 635 videos right now, I think. And they go, you're going to run out of content. I'm not. I just noticed something new today. I just noticed something new. But see, the way I would film it is my old way. Get the camera, film it, upload. No question, no nothing, no editing. That's how I did for like 520 videos for the ones that are watching right now. And remember my old... Just <laughs> watch my most recent video. I'm not going to do it because I, I, I'll shut off my phone. Watch the most recent video I did and then select videos in my channel. Say oldest, sort by oldest <laughs> and watch my first video. I don't even think I said my name right. I don't even know if I said my name. I didn't edit back then. I would just film something and then just put it on the table. Hold on, guys. Pick it, pick it back up and keep going. <laughs> so you look at my table for like two seconds. Anyways, but like today, the buds on top of my newly planted prune trees, uh, bare root, you know, there's buds all along your stems, only the tips, I never noticed it till now, like I said, every day I'm learning something, the tips are growing first, the buds, the bottom ones aren't, are emerging less and less and less. I wonder if that's from the growth of pushing all the way to the tips of the branches and then realizing, uh oh, it's not there anymore. We cut it off. Let's just put that lost energy into this end bud. I don't know. I don't like reading books to find the answers a lot. Thank you, Flora. But um, like I said, I haven't read into it yet, but this is from 19, 1948. Oh, and I get a lot of, um, and let me know questions, by the way. If you have questions, bring them in. I'm just doing a lot of filler, but um, um, I haven't read into this yet. So we're going to see. I don't even want to open it. But if you have questions, let me know. I started cuttings for the first time. Somebody, I'm going to do a video coming up soon. Hi, free spirit. I now journal my observations in the garden. Thank you to you. It's really helpful. Yes. Everybody listening, do a journal. My journal is right underneath all my books. You want to know what you planted. You want to know the name. You're going you're gonna to forget. No, I won't, Moses. You're going to forget. Um, unless you have only one tree. Uh, unless you only have one tree, but you're going to forget. So the names of the plants, even draw a map and map out where they're at. Uh, when you planted them, when this apple variety flowered, when did it stop flowering? Did an insect come and what time? What time of the day? What day of the month? So forth like that. You're not going to regret starting a garden journal. You're not going to regret. Uh, I just put out, I just finally counted everything. I have in, my property is 6,000 square feet. Okay, now you got to remember I have a garage that's 300 square feet a house with a garage, about 1,900 square feet. Then I got a driveway, double, dual two-car driveway. Then I got a huge lawn in the front, compromised lawn in the back. If I had to do all these trees, my wife said, that you better put a lawn for our son in the back. All that stuff. I have 60 fruit trees, 
What was it again? 35 berries, 60 plus herbs. They're all different types. That's varieties. I have probably like 300 or 400 herbs throughout. Uh, 12 perennial greens. Keeps going. And yet, if you guys saw my recent um, community post, if you guys like that, let me know. Someone told me, another YouTuber, don't use the community post too much because YouTubing, uh, YouTubers, uh, excuse me, the community doesn't like it too much. If you wanted those posts, they would go to Instagram. So YouTube's trying this new community post thing for people that had a certain amount of subscribers. And now I think it's to everybody now. But uh, I'm using half the water, always, than the average household. What are my top five favorite plants, trees, or projects, and why? Projects. That's interesting. Let me read that again, though. Favorite plant. Okay. I get asked this a lot from master gardeners, from everywhere, everyone else that know, know me. They always ask, let me say what my favorite plant is. My favorite plant is an easy plant. That's it. I'm going to answer your question, but that's sub-question. That's my favorite plant. I don't like babying plants. Um, okay, so my five favorite plants, and, and they all have to be edible. I don't like growing things that aren't edible. Yes, I have a fiddle leaf in here, but this is for air purification of the house. After the fires of this year in California, if you, I have a video on it of the smoke I was wiping off the coffee tree leaves. Oh, my God. So I put plants throughout the whole house. Um, my five favorite plants, they're fruit bearing. But you said trees too, huh? So I don't have to include trees in this. Okay, plant. Is the, my, uh, my logo, which is uh, origa uh, Syrian oregano or oregonum syriacum. No, I do, not, I do not brew it. I just pour it directly on it. Mix it with water and pour it on there. I don't uh, brew it. The molasses and sugar mix. And the mushrooms are this... Well, I don't know if you really see it, but the mushrooms are this big. Huge. Almost the size of my head. God, if you watch that recent video with the Easter egg, my son's saying there's Easter's, Easter eggs coming up, but they're actually big mushrooms popping out of the ground. They're huge. So definitely, Paul, I learned that. It wasn't my own idea. I learned that from Paul Stamets. He's a mycologist, world-renowned mycologist. Paul Stamets. Stamets. Okay. Um, Oregonum syriacum, because that's my logo, and that's what I started with. Um, Aronia berry, because it, it has the highest antioxidants in the world. Or choke berry, because they could choke. it's so astringent, it could choke the back of your throat. You, you won't be able to eat it. Um, asparagus, easy plant. If you don't have asparagus, you're missing out. Easy plant. And do what I do. Yes, wood ash for your compost is amazing for phosphorus. Even putting charcoal, w lump wood charcoal in the compost. Break it up and put, throw it in there. Not charcoal like Kingsford, the wood one, the mesquite or something. Break them up and throw it in there. Asparagus, all of you should be growing asparagus. It's easy. Do it the way I do it, and you'll have asparagus almost year-round, except if you're in zone 8 and below. More north, you will, you'll get a fall crop, but you're not going to get as long as I do, or others in zone 9 and above. Asparagus. Boy, oh boy. Plants that make people shake their heads like you grow that, like wasabi, uh, pineapple, like I have, my coffee tree, but that's a tree. Okay, my favorite tree is, number one is Fuyu persimmon, the one that keeps getting eaten by raccoons. That's my first tree I ever planted with my family and in my backyard, my first tree. Uh, second favorite tree, moringa. I love moringa, very easy. Third favorite is apples because there's so much variety. You don't have an apple tree, you're missing out again. Plant apples, don't be afraid. Don't worry about what people say, so many bugs, all this and that. 
They're bugged there because the plant's not healthy. If it's healthy, there will be no problem. You don't see bugs riddled uh, infestation in Yosemite or any other forest that's next to you. You don't walk through the trails of a national park or in a big, huge forest and see, oh my God, there's an infestation of aphids. No, you don't see that because everything's in balance. It's when human beings get involved that we like to just, ooh, I could do it better. We can't do it better. That's why we're failing. That's part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel. Um, fruit tree. I don't like citrus. I'm not good at it anymore. I don't know what happened. Anybody have any tips on citrus? Let me know. Just come quad and everything else is suffering. I like multi-budded plants and almond and projects. I love trying to figure out how to use less water and that's my biggest thing this year. Every episode after this one, my next episode or my next video will have on the top over here somewhere or here. I'm not too sure yet, the temperature of that day, the high and the low. And down here, I'm going to show how much water, I have an app that connects to my city water that will tell me daily how much water I'm using. And I'm going to put how much water I'm using all year long down here. And it'll be every, every day you'll see it go up and up. And I'll maybe you know, show the average of the city too. My, my thing this year is using less water. Do you grow squash? I used to grow squash and pumpkin, but um, I'll tell you why I don't grow. I'll tell you why I don't grow pumpkin and squash and even cucumbers anymore. They take up too much dang space, too much space. I got 6,000 square feet. And like I told you, 750 of that is um, grass. And then meters, what is that? 220 square meters? You know, something like that. Um, I, they take up way too much space. If it was up to me, Moses, uh, we would never think that you would grow a lawn. <laughs> me too. The lawn came with the house, and I, don't, I just don't want to really tear it up. The backyard didn't. That was on a compromise with my wife. The front, I have tore up some and put some fruit trees and herbs and stuff like that. But I, my number one video is how to make a lush lawn. My number one video. I, I was this close to buying an Asian pear today, Wayne. This close. I don't have one. This close, but my wife looked at me. You remember, I just said just trees alone is 60 fruit trees. All different. And that's not including the houseplants. So I got that evil stare on me. So what was I talking about? I, when I see that stare, I stop thinking. Um, oh, the grass. My number one video is grass. So there are so many people, and there were so many people that had called me a liar. Number one video that they say, this guy's a liar. This guy's a liar. No way can you have a lawn like this. No way. I've never seen a lawn like this. And I, and I go, well, I'm doing it organically. Organically. That's why you haven't seen it before. I'm putting fish emulsion. I'm putting wood chips broken down and raking it into the soil under the grass. You know, rake, putting on top of the grass and raking it in. Well, I've never heard of anybody do it like that before. That's why you've never seen grass like mine before. FYI. My backyard grass, <laughs> thanks to Lulu that's sleeping right here. Yeah, that's sleeping right over here. Yeah, it's not so green anymore. You could guess why. With the front yard, I used to get complaints by the city. Not the city, uh, neighbors. They want to complain against the city because I'm using too much water. There's no way, Moses, you have this much, uh, this green lawn without using water as much. You know, they think when we're in a drought, I must be turning on the water at night. Having, my grass is almost blue of how green it is. Then I have to show them. One time I had to post my water bill. Not the water bill, but a big sign of how much water I'm using and the, compared to the average the city is using. I don't, uh, I don't uh, 
Uh, and after that, then, they, then they coming. they're coming. Moses, can you tell us about how to do this? How do you get your roses like this without pesticides? How do you do grow a tree like this? How do you do that? How did you get avocado to even fruit on its first year? The mind, you know, if human beings are funny, you could tell them that there is billions of stars in the sky and all those stars are suns which have billions of planets around them or so forth. And they'll look up in the sky and go, yeah, I believe that. That sounds about right. But you could t tell that those same people, make sure you don't sit on this bench. The paint is wet. They're going to have to go to the, pen, the bench and touch the bench to make sure it is actually wet. But they believe the sky had billions of stars that they can't touch. People are funny. I am seeing so much movement, by the way, on my channel for uh, gardeners. A lot of young people. A lot of young people are subscribing like, in droves. So gardening is going to be the next thing after 2020, I think. There hasn't been a gardening channel that has some, hit a million views. I mean, excuse me, a million subscribers. Not saying that's going to be me. I'm just saying that it's surprising to me it hasn't been that already. I'm surprising that... There's only a handful of silver play buttons, uh, YouTube channels with over 100,000 subscribers. Everybody has to eat. People just go, oh, I'll just buy it from the store. And that's soon going to go away. We have an apple here, a honey crisp. It was $3.99 a pound, and it weighed 1.25 pounds. It was $5 for one apple. Any more questions? I see we have eight people here. Hello, everyone. I have a notepad or something like that. I'll wait and see if there's any questions. You know, uh, yeah, well, that is great. The young people are getting interested in gardening. Gives hope. Yes. Yep. Yep. Gives hope for the future. More and more people are gardening, especially in America. If you're not in America, let me know if that's the same for you guys. Um, yeah, if you're still there. I remembered something, and it worked. Uh, I didn't try it, but my, my colleague did long ago. They uh, put coffee, not hot coffee, cold coffee, freshly brewed, on their spider mites, and they all died. They can't handle caffeine. I guess they ingested it and they probably got all hyped up, you know, and their inter internal systems, probably too much adrenaline or whatever happened and they just died off. So that's another one for you guys. Neem oil is fine. It's good to do organic, but you got to be careful with neem oil. The residuals are pretty naturally toxic. Let me know any more uh, thing. I'm going to do a, a recent video coming up on my pothos. <laughs> yeah, it's just something else, huh? Man, a dog having a channel? That's interesting. Lulu, something else. She's sleeping right here. She's waiting for Shant to come back. Shant just, we just got him a new bed. So they're, they're buying a whole bunch of stuff. God, that dog is something else. That dog is smart. She has tr she's still young. She uh, has anxiety if we leave. Do you plant asparagus seeds? No, never seeds. Uh, Two-year-old root, long ago. Two-year-old crowns. If you want to plant seeds, go ahead. Be my guest. Thank you. Um, I think that was TJ. Yeah, thank you, TJ. You brought up something that when people talk to me, if I do a tour or if I talk to people about gardening, um, they ask, they asked this, that, and the other, and they, and they asked me, when should I start gardening? I said, I said, yesterday. Then they go, something else. They say something else, and I said, listen, gardening is one of those rare occasions where you actually have a time machine. You can buy a plant that's 10 years old, and you save 10 years of your own life by planting it. You could, you could move back time with gardening. So if there's something, if you can afford it, 
and there's plants that are years in the ground that you can buy, I would buy them in a heartbeat. We just had a bad floods here on a hill. My moringas took it hard. Okay, uh, took, your moringas took it hard with a lot of flooding. Uh, what do you mean by that? Did the year, um, leaves go yellow or? It's very important to know what happened to the moringas. Wow, we're already at 30 minutes. Jesus, mercy. So like I was saying, a lot of people, I'm going to do another video coming up, with, uh, and I'm waiting for that answer on the meringue. Yes, leaves yellow and falling off. Okay, uh, now the bark. Is the, bark's, is the bark um, easy to scratch into, or you could dig your thumbnail into it pretty deep? The leaves can come back. Well, if you cut, uh, are we talking about big moringas on the base here? Or they're just, you know, two inch shoots coming up? As long as the tap root, I mean, excuse me, the root ball is still alive, then I, I wouldn't touch anything. Cut it halfway down. Because the, the roots died back a little bit. If you dig in the ground, mm, four, you said one-year-old, four feet away from its st uh, center, you'll see the roots have become, they changed color. They went dark brown. They died back. So since you lost root mass, you need to cut the tree mass. So just cut the tree in half. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty thick for one-year growth. Um, I would cut the tree in half. Don't cut it all the way down. If you do, it doesn't matter. If the root ball's still alive, it's going to send up shoots like crazy. So uh, with the golden pothos, but I wouldn't worry. My moringa is all spindly. It's about 5 foot 10. Yeah, it's up to you. You don't have to put it in the ground. Yes, cut it in half. You don't have to put it in the ground, but... If you put that in the ground, TJ, it's going to it's going to thank you. In pots is not natural. It's not. That's the only time when I recommend people or customers or clients or friends or family if they have problems with their house plants, that's the only time I say chemical, synthetic fertilizer or whatever because they're disconnected from the world. They don't have the earthworms. They don't have mycorrhiza. They don't connect to the the mycelium web that goes on for miles they're on their own they just they're and if they're outside in plastic all the the roots on the edge all on the roots yes try one in the ground at least but it's going to take off i'll tell you that right now it's waiting but that's where i go synthetic and i can't fertilize these like this fiddle leaf i can't fertilize it with fish emulsion then bring it in the house i got a family it's going to sting up the whole house you can't you know Maybe powdered, but still that will smell. So that's the only time where, and I've admitted it in the past in videos, where I do go s synthetic or part synthetic on houseplants. And I'd rather get that out of the way instead of people that may think I'm only, only organic all the time, not with houseplants. Or seed growing seeds in pots, like peat pots. I've tried organic and I tried chemical and I tried both. Both works better. They're, they're disconnected from the planet. They're, they're struggling. If a lot of you are wondering why seeds, what other pests have you encountered? Lulu. She bit off tons of blueberry flowers. But anyways, other than that, when he was young, my son. Okay, a uh, rat. A rat one time went in my avocado tree and ate avocado. Oh, my wife's on. Sean says hi. A rat went up my avocado tree and ate avocado. Okay, if you have, do you have, any of you have a problem with birds eating your fruits off your trees during the year or berries or anything with birds eating them?
If so, if you have trouble with birds eating the fruit, I'm going to be very honest. I'm thinking now really hard. Birds used to eat my sunflower seeds. Okay, that one's tough. Okay, minus seed-bearing plants, which, you know, like millet or uh, wheat or sunflowers, that's a little different. They're after the food at that point. But, um, you know, I know somebody... You know, there was a Discovery uh, Channel video about the birds eating uh, seeds and fruit throughout Australia. Uh, parrots. Wild parrots you guys have, like a lot of it. That's, that's wild. But um, they're after. I've only had one fruit in this backyard and front yard that has been eaten from a bird, visually seen. A oh, squirrel, by the way, too. Squirrel eats my figs. Yeah, the parrots, yeah. Squirreling my, my, my figs. The, the birds are not after the food. Think about it. Think about it for a second. Does a bird... If you leave it there, yes. Mung sprouts are extremely healthy. Mung sprouts are extremely healthy. Um, and mung beans. But they just peck, let's say a plum. They peck and peck. One and two bites. And they leave. That didn't fill them up. They're after the water. So in my garden, I have a bird bath in the summer. If you put a bird bath in the summer, guaranteed 50% or, or less eaten fruit. They're after water. You, can you blame them? They're thirsty. They see a fruit. They know the water is going to taste good and the water is going to be nutritious and have a lot of minerals. They're going to bite and they're going to drink the droplets that come out of it. If they were hungry, the whole fruit would be gone and there would just be a pit standing there on the tree. But they only do one or two bites. They ruin the fruit that way. But they do one or two bites because they're thirsty. So if you want less bites on your fruit, plant a uh, plant. Oh, Jesus. Put a bird bath. I'm going to be doing a video on that too probably this summer. The reason is I just need more, I need, I, I need more uh, topics. I'm not running out of ideas, but like I said, that many I have, like, I think John Kohler, I find having a water, distracts the birds? Oh, you mean they drink out of it, or they see the bowl of water and they fly away. They don't know what that bowl of water is. But I, like I was saying, um, John Kohler and somebody else are the only ones that have more videos on gardening than myself, I believe. I could be wrong. But um, when you get up to that high, it's a drink. There you go. It helps a lot putting birdbath out there. But when you have that much, you know, boy, oh boy, it's tough. So let's see. Let's see what kind of... 1948 seed catalog, no GMO. What kind of cool plant? Let's do a random one. 1948, my God. Purchase, well, uh, it, it means happy, but purchase gay violas. You won't see that anymore on these on new magazines or catalogs. Blackberry lilies. And everything's hand drawn. Everything's hand drawn. Oh, I don't want to rip this book. Where is it at? Well, here's the cover. Oh, jeez. Look at that. Oh, well. Isn't that crazy? For $1. Well, I lost the, the, co the cover came off. $1. And it's not, it's not cheap, 25 cents a packet. 40 cents for a, a bushel. What's a bushel of seed? All right, that may be cheap. That sounds like a lot. But we're talking about right after pretty much World War II. My God. And who knows who, who held this? Wartime vegetable garden books and magazines are very special. Yeah. So like the golden pothos, a lot of people cut it 
If you have a golden pothos, by the way, beautiful plant, produces a lot of oxygen. But if you have one, you'll see they're meant in the, like in the wild, they're meant to hook onto a tree or masonry or, or whatever, a rock. You'll see little nodes in the back of them, big ones in the back of the vine. Leaf's this way, nodes are this way. When it touches, it attaches, and the root just drills, like an instant taproot drills into the structure, whether it be a tree or whatever it is. So a lot of people on YouTube or you find friends doing it, they'll cut the whole huge vine off of it, of the pothos, which is right here. One moment. You'll see the pothos leaf. Have you ever seen this plant before? They have a golden pothos and just a regular. Uh, the more sun it receives, the more golden it will be. The less sun it receives, the more green it will be because right here there's no chlorophyll production. So if it has less sun, it will become all green. So anyways, a lot of people cut a huge vine and they put it in, the, <coughs> in water or in a, a pot of soil, a huge vine. That's not the way to do it. You got to cut each little, uh, can you guys see that? The, the taproot? You see that huge taproot that's coming out of this thing already? You cut them in little pieces and you put them into your water. I'm going to do a video on this soon. You see that? And that emerged. That's, that not, that's not how it used to look. So you cut in little pieces and instead of one vine giving you hopefully one plant, because now only one node is in the water and you have all these other nodes and leaves draped down the side in this, and this little node that's not even rooted yet has to support all this growth. It's not going to happen. Good. But, um, so you cut them. That's the big key. Then I do that to spider plants too. Let me get a big one out here. If you can see the spider plant, the root's right there. That's all you do. Cut it from its, its limb. It grows out a, like a web, and it'll grow little spider, spider plants out of it. So it'll look like little spiders off a web. You just cut it off, put it in water, you're done. You know how much money that could save you? Oh, my dry, oh, from the last video. What I end up doing with the dried lavender is I use it in my garden to deter pests. I use it in tea. I love using it in tea. I put it in a dryer, um, as a dryer sheet in a satchel or a, I don't know what you call those little bags. You throw it as a, freshen up the, um, the clothes in the dryer. Put it into my closet so it keeps birds, um, bugs away. I also put it in my dog bed to keep fleas and ticks away. Oh, you put your spider, so, so TJ, so prime example, not to pick on you, but prime example, so what you did, so keep silverfish away, I didn't know that, and the biggest problem with silverfish are in kitchen cupboards, if you didn't know that, they did, I don't know why they love kitchen cupboards, not ours here, but my previous home it did, so throw it in your kitchen cupboard too, so TJ, you put, you cut the spider plant, and you just put it into, okay, and you just put it into the soil and nothing happened, correct? Well, I think you just answered that right there. So there's another cool thing you can do with house plants. I may do it. I'm just, so it was, okay, TJ. I may do it because I don't think anybody's ever done it. Is, uh... Oh, shoot. Is air grafting or air layering? I forgot the name now. Wrapping soil and foil, S and F, soil and foil, wrapping the node of the spider plant or the pothos while it's still connected to its mother plant and let it grow in there, air layer. Okay. So I kind of, I was right. Kind of. And I don't know if that's ever been done. Just so it gets people to think. A lot of comments I have on my YouTube channel in the past two and a half years is, I never thought about that, Moses. I never thought about that. 
and it's not sickening like for me like it's i was gonna say it's almost sickening how often i i spend time in my garden ever since i was a little kid and always looking i used to watch ants going up a plant and why are they going to go up where are they going where are they coming from why is the plant why did this plant grow taller than this one it was next to it so i so many experiments since i was very young and i decided to share that with my youtube channel uh, what's your personal opinion on aquaponics and hydroponics? Do you do it, yeah? Do you do hydroponics or aquaponics? Or does anybody here do it? Okay, I ran out of water. Okay, while you're answering, if you are, Where food is an issue, and where food is a big issue here in the United States is Massachusetts. They, they can't produce much food themselves, and there's only one way in sometimes and one way out of Massachusetts. So for them, doing aquaponics is important because planting in the ground or in Alaska, or Canada, desert, okay, or desert, Aquaponics and hydroponics are going to help you a lot. Not, let's say, like where I am in California. California, you're going to be just, one, the water's too expensive. Just running a shower. There's some, some cities in California, there's a timer in your shower that the city gives you. You got to put it in your shower head and pull onto it, and it timer ticks, and that's it. It's not that fast. We don't, we don't smell here in California, <laughs> but... It's, it's pretty fast, like, at least in Los Angeles, in the past years, they give it out to their residents. Um, but my opinion is, if you can plant in the ground, like me, like myself, aquaponics and hydroponics are just for fun. But if, if you live in an area where it's not, uh, land is not accessible through weather or through poor soil conditions, or the scale of your lot is not as big as you'd like it to be, oh yeah, there's a, there's a good reason why. Because I, let's say in 100 square feet, I only could plant, let's say, 10 spinach. Let's just say. Okay, with, with 10 square feet, you can plant probably 30 or 50 spinach plants because you can grow up with hydroponics. You can grow up with aquaponics. So... That, to me, that right there, <clears throat> a vertical garden is, I would love to do. Yes, th that guy is the, one of my idols for gardening. He's pushing a lot right now for new uh, students, by the way. So if you're interested, head over to his channel. He has a lot of new videos, like one, three minutes each. And that's another reason why I started a YouTube channel too, is because I, I hated watching you, like yourself, okay, let's say purple tree collared. I search YouTube, purple tree collared. And I see a picture. Oh my God, that's what I want to watch. I'm tired of just reading blog posts. I'm tired of just watching or reading something. That name, that last name sounds familiar, TJ. Now I'm going to look that up. Hold on. Elaine... Ingram, wait, 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 Ingram, okay, um, oh shoot, someone remind me, what was I just saying, when I find some new name, I'm like, oh, I want to look what that is, I got to eat more Moringa. Okay, yes, Paul Stamets again. Oh, yes, purple tree collared. Okay, you search it, then you find the video you want. It says 52 minutes and 33 seconds. I'm like, how in the world can you do a video on purple tree collards for 52 minutes and 33 seconds? You click on that video on YouTube, and you watch 40 minutes of it, and finally they get to purple tree collared, and it's like two minutes of that. I got sick and tired of that, years of that. 
I, I'm a YouTube fiend. I love YouTube. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do my own. I'm going to do whatever I learned, and I'm going to do short videos. Two, three minutes, five minutes. The longest videos I have are my pruning videos or spring tour. Or do you guys like longer videos? Do you guys want me to go to 10 minutes? It, you know, I'll have to do a lot of fluff. Or uh, I'm assuming you guys just want, this is how you do it. See you later. Happy gardening. Bye. Yeah, I, I'm, I assume it's going to be short vids. This is going to be the answers. I, 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 I don't know how in the world, like male, make kale chips and you see one minute and six, one hour and six seconds. I'm like, one hour and six seconds for making kale chips, guys? You know what that is, I think? As a YouTuber, the more watch time we receive, like right now is the ultimate watch time is live because it's more interactive. You may want to stay. But if you watch a 30-minute video and you stay for 10 minutes, that's a lot of watch time. It's not about views anymore, like a million views. It's a million hours is what they want. Short, better, but longer tours are good. Yes. Uh, with a cuppa. Now, that cuppa means that like a cup of coffee or talking. Is that what that is? Some are fo I remember what you told me last time. Some are focused solely on ad revenue. Yes, they are. So when you, when you um, push out videos, you're going to watch, like, let's say my video is three minutes. You might watch a minute and a half. Okay, I got it. Thanks, Moses. See you later. But if you watch a 10 minute video, you're going to watch, you're going to watch five minutes, you know, half time. Now I got five, I got four extra minutes, three and a half extra minutes. And that just makes YouTube make you uh, recommended more. So that's why I think a lot of these uh, YouTubers are doing hour long and especially gardening. I don't know what they're doing. So, um, any other questions? We're at 52 minutes here. I haven't got a 20% thing for my battery yet, so that's good. Let's see what I was going to ask you about. Uh, do some of you like that I, I do shout out of comments? I, I was wary on doing in the beginning because I, I thought people might say, you know, I really don't want to be shown like that. I don't want my... You know, I don't want my thumbnail to be shown or my name. I don't, I just wanted to say thank you, Moses, or something like that. I don't want my face to be shown because, you know, the thumbnail, excuse me. Not, yeah, I guess the thumbnail of your comment has a face sometimes. Do you guys feel that way or do you guys like that I do shout outs and I do an answer to it? I answer anyways, but um, shouting out, let me know. And what else do I do? Question of the day. Let's see what else. Or anything else you'd like to see. Because I have a script. Have you experienced shallow root growth with wood chips? In uh, yes, uh, shout outs are nice. Okay, good. It's fine with me. Okay, that's good. The comments shout outs are helpful as I don't always have time to read everyone's comments and thanks for shout out. Okay, good. All right, then I feel better. Okay, so... So it was very cool to see your comment shown. You mean the one with the, the mushroom and the coffee or the, the cocoa? <laughs> that, co that mushroom probably weighed almost a pound of just water. Have you experienced shallow root growth with wood chips? In the beginning, yes. Um, and uh, root rot. Root rot. Big time. Oh, did you, uh, what's the, Christopher, did you end up watching the second part of the, of the avocado video? Oh, that's what I was going to talk about. I knew you, some of you might get like frustrated that I go, oh, you have to watch the next one to find out what my idea was. I stayed up till 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, you did watch it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not the biggest like, oh, wow, but it's working. The fruit flies are landing on those flowers. But like I said, there was a warning on there. If you got citrus next to that avocado or you have avocado on the tree, well, I don't think fruit flies really affect avocados because of the skin so tough. But still, I wouldn't, if there's any fruit anywhere, really, within a 10 meter radius, 
not 10 meter, 10 feet and probably three, three meter, five meter radius. If there's any fruit on a tree or a berry, forget it, forget it. If they lay eggs, it's like every female can produce, I think 1,000 offspring, forget it. You'll have a, you'll have a headache and a half. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I do those weird things. I was up till two in the morning and I wasn't included in the video, but I'll just say it now. The reason why I'm up till two is because now for me is a crucial time. It's beginning to get warmer and warmer. Like you saw my almonds are flowering. Um, when the almond flower, when asparagus comes up anywhere, when asparagus comes up, like my video said, it tells the future. Spring is on its way. When an almond flower blooms, wherever you live, if it blooms, spring's here. Doesn't matter what the temperature is, nature knows better. Spring's already started. So if you have almonds wherever you are, whether that's March, but the thing with almond is you have to have a hot summer. If you don't have a hot summer, you're not going to really get good almond production. So, like I said, up till two, because this is my new year of spring, and I don't want to waste time. I had to think, what, what can I do? The, the bees here, honeybees from Europe, the honeybees in America aren't native here. They came from Europe. We have mason bees here. They don't have hives, really. They eat honeybees, create honey and nectar and all that from nectar and all this. Mason bees eat that nectar. And I don't know if they make honey or not. I don't think they do. They just drill holes in trees and they live in there. But they're, they have to pollinate all day long because nectar is their actual food. Uh, but uh, honeybees are not native. So at eight, they start buzzing. You'll see them everywhere in my garden, everywhere. And at, right at five or six o'clock, they're gone. And that's when the, I think the male opens up at night and the female opens up in the morning. Avocados I'm speaking of. So if they're gone, the pollen on their legs of the female flower, or vice versa, is not there anymore. They're gone. They're not going to be there when, at nighttime when that avocado opens. But fruit fly, as many of you know, like I said in the video, you have fruit flies, <laughs> you can shoo them all you want, and they're just going to land back, right back where they started. So, so far it's working well. But we'll see. It's an experiment. Just an idea. The avocado works amazing. So if anybody used avocado on your avo avocado, rosemary, excuse me. See, this is where in the video I would edit this out. But uh, your rosemary on avocado definitely helps. Any other questions? But once again, Chris, or Christopher, excuse me, when I first started with wood chips and I planted trees, root rot. I lost so many nectarines, peaches, and apricots, you wouldn't believe. Last question for me. Okay, yeah, it's getting late for you, y'all. So thank you for being here, by the way. I planted chick chickpea seeds, and they sprouted two days later. Quite tall. Any device? Okay, now, uh, yes, when did it get fixed? Uh, one year. It took one year for those wood chips to finally degrade. Uh, uh, and I put a lot of bone meal and blood meal into the wood chips. Bone meal and blood meal and to give the wood chips food to go off of. It's, it's weird. Wood chips, excuse me, the soil. What's your favorite and easiest way to make raised bed? Ooh, I got rid of my raised bed, but it, the easiest way is cinder blocks. I got rid of it. It gets too dry. Nitrogen, yes. More nitrogen to break down those wood chips. That's what I was getting at, Christopher. You need a lot of nitrogen. Blood meal. Okay, yeah, chickpea. Okay, don't water it too much. That's my number one advice with chickpea. Don't water it too much. You, 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 uh, and if it gives yellowing leaves, it's very easy for it to yellow its leaves. It's from overwatering or underwatering. You will not know. So if you see yellowing and drying up, it pushes out new leaves like crazy. Meaning it's, it's, push, it's, it's shoving off an old leaf and replacing it with new ones. So when you see a yellow leaf, don't go, oh no, it needs more nutrition or it needs more water or less water, leave it alone. So if it's sprouted in two days, whatever you're doing is good. Continue doing that. Any other questions? But yes, raised bed, 
I saw you responded, but cinder blocks, cinder blocks. That's the easiest way to do it. If you use wood, cedar. Don't use anything else or redwood or you're going to have bug problems. Okay, yeah, I'm good night to you if you're going to sleep or something also. And thank you for showing up. Okay, now we're at an hour. Any other questions? Everybody's ready for spring to start. I've been trying to grow cucumbers for years. I've probably got a total of 20 fruit. What is the secret keeping things strong all year if you don't know? You seem like a smart guy. <laughs> if, you, if you know, you seem like a smart guy. So, no, you're, you're, you're going to stay awake, yeah? Oh, my God. All right, well, thank you. Are you, you planting a lot of legumes? Yes, I am. A lot of legumes, but I can't eat fava beans. I have something called favism. F-A-V-A-I-S-M. A lot of uh, Middle Eastern or Mediterranean, anyone in the Mediterranean, Italy, South France and all that, if they have, um, they could have something called G6PD deficiency, where if I eat fava beans, I, I'm on the lower end, but if I was on the higher end, I can, done. It could be, I could be, it's over for me. It's crazy. Favism. I've been trying to grow cucumbers for years. I've probably got a total of 20 fruit. I'm assuming 20 cucumber. What is the secret of keeping things strong all year if you don't... Okay, smart guy. Okay. I have a few... Um, I, I have a few uh, videos on my cucumbers. And like I said, I'm, I'm trying to get away from cucumbers. They take too much uh, space. But the, the, the way... Cucumbers love to live. So I'm assuming you mean 20 fruits is 20 cucumbers per plant. So you're saying that your cucumbers are growing when it's warmer. They're producing their first flush of flowers and fruit. Then after you start picking off those fruit, they're dead. Is that what you're asking? Fava. I was planting fava until I heard about fava. Okay, so you're Greek? Okay, well, there's a... Okay, it's better to be safe. So you do know about favism. I have it. My family's from Lebanon and Turkey. Um, but if you, there's a blood test, TJ. Total fruit, like total, like you had a whole bunch of cucumbers and you only got 20 fruit. And I might know your problem if you answer If you, in case you're answering the, the main issue you're having, if you're having that issue. Yes, exactly. On the cucumbers, they give a couple of fruit and that's it. Uh-uh. Calcium. You're very low on calcium. Okay, I was planting. I, I just, uh, but there's a blood test, by the way. Just go to the back of that one. Um, you're very low on calcium. That, uh, first step. Second, um, so to add calcium, just don't, in, 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 is this in the pot or in the ground, the cucumbers? So uh, oyster shells, just go to your feedlot if you have one, or, you know, a pet, not a, a pet store that can have for like birds or something like that, or chickens even, like farm store. If they have oyster shells, just throw that in your, uh, in your garden. You should be fine. But the cucumber turns, the, the, the plant dries out or the cucumber dries out and turns black. I'm assuming you mean cucumber. If you are, calcium. That's 100% calcium. Eggshells would help. Snail shells. Snail shells, if, don't throw them away. If you see empty snail shells, crush them up and throw them in your garden. Everything comes back to the garden. I mean, everything comes back to nature. Not many people know you could use snail shells in the garden. Oh, the plant dies. Also calcium, but... 
Is it in a pot or in the ground? I don't know if you answer that question. If it's in a pot, you're using too much water. If it's in the ground, could either be very hot heat. It's not a hot variety. A heat-loving variety. Most cucumbers are, but you might be growing one that isn't. And, and uh, here's another thing. A lot of cucumbers are not easy to grow. People think it's easy. It's not. If you want easy cucumbers, Armenian myself, Armenian cucumber, which is actually a melon, by the way. Okay, with pa um, okay, so I saw your powdery mildew question, uh, but put Armenian cucumber, put easy cucumbers that will produce. Try that, and one of the easiest is Armenian. That's the easiest. If it's in a pot. You gotta, you gotta keep checking that pot. And if it's a black pot, spray the outside of the, the planter white. So when the sun hits it, the pot itself, it doesn't heat up like a black pot would heat up. It's white and will reflect a lot of that light away. Calcium and Armenian cucumber. Try Armenian cucumber. I have big powdery mildew problem two years ago, so I stopped planting squash plants. Okay, powdery mildew, as we know, are affected by three things. Water, light, air. So if one of the, if you, when you, when you have powdery mildew, it might be too late, okay? But let's say it wasn't that bad yet. If you changed any of these, one of these three things, air, light, and water, if you changed any of them, it would correct itself. So only you would know, what was it that, uh, were you watering, hand watering them? It's very bad to hand water squash on the top, foliar watering, water from underneath. Um, if you weren't, if you were watering underneath, did it, was it too clustered? When I grew pumpkins, my God, it was from my son with jack-o'-lanterns. My family would, well, friends, I would give away pumpkins for free. Uh, hand watering above them, TJ, if it was above them, don't do that, underneath. You can hand water, but just make sure you get under the leaves, not on top. Um, but I would do nothing to these pumpkins, which is a squash, and I like winter squash, um, excuse me, spaghetti, squ spaghetti squash. Okay, that, that's, if you don't do that, TJ, that's one of the three. So water was the issue. What I was getting to with the air is I would prune leaves off of my squash. Every other leaf, if it got too crowded, every other leaf, if there were leaves were overlapping each other, I would prune off a leaf. I would prune off a leaf to let more air flow and, and light inside. That's a lot of work, I understand, but I love gardening that much. But then again, if you think about it, nature wouldn't do that. Nature wouldn't prune off each leaf, or maybe it would. Maybe there's some kind of animal that only leaves, eats the leaf. And, you know, we're killing caterpillars that are eating a leaf, but if they're segmented, like they're eating this leaf, they skip this one, they're eating this leaf, maybe that caterpillar is telling you something. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Because I've seen drastic results when I prune leaves off of my uh, squash plants. And if you grow squash, by the way, too, if you want more squash or more pumpkins, okay, the uh, reason why I'm saying pumpkins, TJ's, because that's what I, I love growing. I used to love growing pumpkins. I have no more space anymore for it. I used to love it just because it's fun to look at pumpkins and my son loving it, too. But when I grew pumpkins, just, if you want more, you plant more. You don't let one pumpkin plant the base of it, you know, how the, the plant can get huge. Try to grow 25 pumpkins. You know, you don't want that one plant that's going to stress. When that summer heat comes, you're going to start seeing the pumpkin plant leaves wilt or squash leaves wilt. And you're going to, I love pumpkin bread, and you're going to see at nighttime the plants, come, the leaves come back up. If you pruned off uh, I would say 75% of those pumpkins, the leaves will never wilt in the summer. Because imagine these pumpkins are just full of water. They're just soaking up so much water. 
And it's like a soaker hose. If you have ever used a soaker hose, the beginning 10 feet of the soaker hose is nice, huge, nice amount of water coming out. But when you get to the end of the 100 foot hose, it's barely coming out of the hose. Think of that as the pumpkin vine. By the time you're trying to, you have these big, beautiful pumpkins here that are suffering because you have these little tiny pumpkins you're trying to get more of 20, 30 feet away on the vine. Cut those off. Cut them off. Compost them. If you want more pumpkins or more squash, plant more plants. Plant more plants. Why don't they come up with another word of planting? Like building. Sidetracking here. Why do they call it Empire State Building? It's already built. Are they still building it? It should be Empire State Built. My cucumber wilted like that. Thought I had a disease. Nope. No. No, it's a uh, cucumbers are pretty, pretty, um, if you, if you, you know, the cucumbers that have problems a lot are the pickle cucumbers. That's why pickle is part of the reason why they're so expensive. Um, you, if you want to try, there's a, there's two type of arm. Let's just say, if you want to try an Armenian cucumber, it's one of the most popular ones, there's two types. One is the melon type. Those are the ones you see that are like the biggest I ever grew if you straighten them out, because they get kind of curvy, I would say it would be about four feet long. <clears throat> That's the biggest Armenian cucumber I ever grew, I think. Maybe a little bit bigger. Um, but, they're, but they're melons, not that. And there's a serpent one. It's actually the most delicious cucumber. What was his name? Sorry. John. The most delicious cucumber. It's raved about it may be subjective you know maybe not everybody will like it is the the true armenian cucumber it's called serpent hairy serpent it actually has hair all over it fuzz and it's, it has black stripes i think it's called black if you want to write it down striped armenian cucumber or black striped serpent cucumber that one is meant to grow in heat up oh, i i got my first uh 20 percent so probably 10 more minutes or less on this uh, live, just letting everybody know. Or my battery's going to go dead. The reason why I like using this, it's plugged into the phone. So yes, if you don't, um, and you said no, not those cucumbers, I'm assuming you meant the pickle ones. So if it wasn't that one, and you don't mind trying the Armenian, try the Armenian. That's the, the foolproof one, especially the melon one. And that one's the most delicious, if you add stuff to it, it's one of the most delicious natural drinks you can have is the, the melon Armenian cucumber. The big one you see on YouTube. The, the, the clickbait, the clickbait uh, cucumber, the one that is huge and everybody's smiling holding it, that it's, it looks like it's 200 pounds. It's actually a melon. Not many people know that. It's not a cucumber. It's a melon. Any other questions? I know there's seven more here. Thanks for all the likes. So I've been trying this year to grow a pineapple. I'm productive with it. So I'll be doing a video on that too. Has anybody ever tried to grow a pineapple before? Any tips? I've never grown one before. All right. Good night, Wayne. Yeah, I'm going to cut it short anyways, Wayne. I'm not sh <laughs> short. It's over an hour. But I mean, you know, just a few more minutes. Or coffee tree. I have one ripening. My first one. Oh, so you, you're growing a pineapple plant? A house plant? I found out, by the way, I've tested two of them out. One of them died, one of them didn't. And I'll be doing a video on it shortly. The one that died, I watered the soil. Excuse me, the one that didn't die, you know how the pineapple grows all the, the top of the pineapple has all the leaves like this, like a bromeliad. Bromeliad, you only can water from the top. No, God, that name sounds so familiar. I have, uh, for M's question, that name sounds familiar to you. I got to look that up. I wrote it down. Um, 
I've gotten so much flack over planting berry plants and fruit trees in the same hole, you won't even believe. I, I, okay, this video is on my iPhone 7, and the video of gardening is iPhone 7. And then I do a lot of editing. But it's all iPhone 7, not even the new ones. It's just iPhone 7. With, with a cracked screen, there's a huge, because I was gardening one day and I dropped it on a rock. There's a huge crack that goes all along it, big crack. Eh, whatever, as long as it still works. So with the pineapple, and I'll get back to that, the planting more trees in one hole. The pineapple, you plant like, uh, you water like the bromeliad. You water from the top, the leaves. You water in that cup and let it drizzle, let it drizzle down. You don't water from the soil. Is a pineapple bromeliad? Now I got to look, I'm going to write that down. Pineapple. Okay, with the, I gotten so much flack. More than anyone, I'll just be um, bromeliad. I'll be uh, candid here, cussing at me with comments. I think it's only edible bromeliad. I'm going to look that up right now after this uh, video. Um, cussing and all this stuff over how I plant. My blueberries, what, uh, my fruit trees. I used. I have a fruit tree in my um, my old my my house. I used to live at my my family's home. I put four cherry tree, um, apricot trees and stuff in one hole. Wait, wait, Doctor Doctor C Ingram. God, the name sounds so familiar. But um. But yes, in nature, like I was saying in the last live, there's an apricot tree in nature. Uh, Iran is pomegranate. Armenia is apricot, where they say it was originated. Citrus, China, so forth. So there's an apricot forest in Armenia that I've heard of, legends of it, where it was just a thick forest of apricots, where because the apricot pits would fall and grow another tree. So in nature, it's happening. Why can't we do it? Yes, you're right. And I get a lot of flack for that, free spirit. What you just said right there is exactly why in these two and a half, almost two and a half years, I've gotten so much bad comments where one time, Koss Engram, Koss, where I almost just gave up YouTubing. I never admitted that before to anybody. You guys are the first one. I almost just gave it up. I almost said, you know what? Oh, my mannerisms. I liked using my hands a lot. Done. Or do the old, do the old uh, Donald Trump. I almost, I almost gave up because of so much. Uh, The cool thing about braided fruit trees, if anybody wants to, the best way to graft a fruit tree, and I've done it before, is rubbing off um, the cambium, not the whole cambium layer, but the bark. Okay, now I'm going to really look it up. <laughs> um, the cambium layer on both trees and put the cambium layers together. So let's say an apricot and a plum. Put them together rubbed off cambium layers and wrap it up tight and um, uh, sooner or later they're just going to fuse that is the best sooner or later it's sooner rather than later that is the best and healthiest way oh excuse me and paint paint it don't use tar i don't know why people use tar paint it you don't want any water or any bugs going in there just put them together in about a, really two weeks it's fused. That's it. It's over. Those trees are one. So if you don't want that apricot no more, let's say, you cut it off. Now it's a plum. Stuff like that. So I used to buy a potted plum. I have an apricot tree. I wanted half apricot, half plum, but it was in the middle of the season. I didn't want to graft with wedge graft, you know, cutting the limb and putting it in. So I put my potted Santa Rosa plum next to the apricot, rubbed off the cameo layers, stuck it on there, and... I think about three weeks later, I could cut that limb off of the Santa Rosa, 
put the Santa Rosa away. Now I had a Santa Rosa growing out of an apricot tree. No one really does that, but it, it happens. It's easy. Make it easy for yourself. Gardening is supposed to be happy. The most time-consuming thing you're supposed to do in gardening is eating. If you're doing something else that's taking a long time, weeding and so forth, you're doing it wrong. There's no weeding problems in nature because there's no open terrain. The taste did not change. Same thing. Apricot or plum tastes the same thing. The, the, the actual limb just grew into it. The nutrition... A plum needs more nutrition than an apricot, so my potted plum grew faster in the ground, grew faster than the grafted one to the apricot, because the apricot doesn't grow as fast. It doesn't have that root structure, the hormone push as a Santa Rosa. If you want a fast growing tree, if one of you are going, it's this time right now, bare root season, right now, like tomorrow, go, or else the good stuff's gone. Um, you want a Santa Rosa plum. And uh, donut peach or Saturn peach. If you wanna, if you are not that great at fruit trees, Santa Rosa plum. There's a joke which is false. Dave Wilson Nursery proved it wrong that you can never keep a Santa Rosa plum under six feet tall, and they have for the past 25 years. That's a, it's a joke, a running joke. Santa Rosa plum will produce a thousand plums for you, and you don't even have to try. You're trying to prune to get less fruit. Any other questions? Wow, we still have seven. Mercy. Well, thanks for sticking around so long. So, Koss Ingram. And that gentleman, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Geoff from Australia, the permacultural expert. He's a legend. Actually, his mentor was a, the legend. But he's also a legend. If none of you watched his videos, he does a lot of work in Jordan. If that individual from Jordan is still here, he does a lot of work in Jordan. It's amazing how many people there are around the world that watch my channel or any channel regardless. But, but the biggest heat I ever got for that other question was planting too many things in one hole. I used to get so much flack for that. Oh, that's, then that sounds like me because my, my, uh, my thumbnail is a wild oregano. Oh, that's it, Bill Mollison. Now he, oh, I got 10%, you guys, so I got about one minute. Throw in your questions quick <laughs> or, or good night, either one. Lulu's sleeping. I got to wake her up. I gave two blushing star and two. If you have a bad, like riddled with brown rot, and you have other fruit trees, it's unfortunately, I would trash it as well. You just don't want it to spread. Or use, uh, cut it down to the, not to the stump, the graft, but cut it one foot above the graft and start grafting other stuff because you don't want to lose that three-year-old rootstock. You don't want to use that, lose that three-year-old rootstock. So I would graft into it. All right, bye, John. So if you can graft into that M, if you can graft into that three-year-old rootstock, root stock, I would, instead of throwing it away. But when it's riddled, you don't want to, that to spread elsewhere. And the who will spread it is black ants and bees. Those are the ones that will spread it. And you can't do nothing about it once it's riddled. All right, everyone. Before I, it, it, my phone dies. See you guys. I just don't want it to die. Happy gardening, everyone. Let's get ready for spring. I'll try to do more of this every, every other week. Cutting, yeah, moringas, yep. M me too. All right, guys. Bye. Cool. Bye, everyone.